turn, if you will, to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We read this verse, this passage, actually, every Wednesday night in our communion service. Every Wednesday night we go over this. And it's one of the, those things that you can read the scriptures and not even hear them. You get so familiar with certain texts that we, I don't, I don't mean you, I mean people at large, can get so familiar with certain texts that we don't even hear them. Starting with verse 29, it says, For he that eats and drinks unworthily eats and drinks damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. The previous verses are talking about how that when you come to the Lord's table, when we all come, we're to come in a spirit of humility. And if we have a grievance or a sin in our life or something against our brother, we're to confess that and make it right so that that doesn't taint the fellowship around the Lord's Supper. And uh, so many times it says right here in the preceding verses that because people do not discern the body of Christ, the body of Christ is the true believers throughout the whole world, wherever they might be. And for us to say, oh, they're not a member of uh, my church denomination, so they're not a member of the body of Christ. That's what he's saying we must never do. We must never say that somebody doesn't qualify because they do not meet our expectations or our denomination's guidelines or the particular facet of Christianity that we subscribe to. It would be wrong to correct someone for believing and living what they have been taught and what they have received as the word of the Lord. If, if they need to be perfected in some area of doctrine, that's fine. Let them be perfected. But the word of God does not diminish the fact if they are born again, they are born again. They're Christians, and we need to honor that. So he's saying, he that eats and drinks unworthily eats and drinks and the word here is damnation. He drinks damnation to himself. And the reason that I pulled out this scripture, because our passage in our study today is about condemnation. But I wanted you to see that in this passage, the word condemnation is rendered damnation. And so many times, as I looked up the originals, they are interchangeable. The word condemnation or the word damnation. Sometimes when I read this on Wednesday night, I, because the alternate is condemnation, I just say that because I don't, I don't want uh, someone to think that they're damned to hell, uh, even though they could be if they continued in this, because it says that the reason that the Lord visits judgment on people whenever they drink unworthily or eat unworthily of the, of the communion service is to save them from damnation, that they not, be, that they not perish along with the world. Uh, it goes on, verse 30, for this cause, I guess I just got ahead of myself, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. So that saying, judgment comes on us. Why? To condemn us? No, to rescue us Amen. from that condemnation, so that we would not perish from the world. Verse 31, for if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. As I was doing my word study, I found that the original word in Greek is um, 29.17, and it's crema. And it, it's, uh, it's very similar to our English word criminal, crema. It's a K-R-I-M-A. It's not spelled the same, but in, um, in the um, Strong's it says a function or effect for or against, and in parentheses it says crime. So we get the idea that judgment or condemnation or damnation is a verdict, a judgment call, from God against sin. And, and it is uh, ultimately eternal damnation is the thing that we want to uh, not only escape in our own lives, but to preach to others that there is escape from eternal condemnation. And somebody will say, well, I don't believe a God of love would throw anybody no. into hell. Jesus said, do not fear people, but fear him the Amen. Father, who can destroy both body and soul in heaven. So we need to have a godly reverence about right. this and not be telling God what He can and cannot do. Right. In His great mercy, when we ask for mercy, when we pray, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, He hears that prayer. And His ear is fine-tuned to that prayer. He listens, the 
Bible says, for the cry of the broken. He's just in his throne in heaven listening for somebody to say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Mm -hmm. You know, as I was listening to Betty Baxter's testimony, I noticed that uh, in her generation, she came, she was healed in the 40s, and she told of this tremendous healing from the time that it happened. And I believe she entered the ministry when she was about 15 years old. And she continued to testify of this incredible healing that she had received, where God had just done this major overhaul for her. And, and if uh, you have YouTube and want that site, I'll send it to you, uh, that link, I mean, because it's very good. And, and she said, uh, when she's having an altar call, she said, pray this, God be merciful to me, a sinner. And I said to Bob, that's what we have posted on the outside of our building. That is the sinner's prayer. And yet we, that we live in a generation that has tried to sideswipe that issue and just say, uh, uh, Jesus, give me mercy, uh, and uh, I'm not going to be that. Sorry about, sorry about my sins. You know, be too light and flippant. And he is listening for the cry of a heart Amen. that is in earnest and serious, completely serious, about uh, remorse and regret for the sins. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. 32. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. And there in verse 32, the word is catacrino. It's a variation of the first word that we read where we looked at the word judge, which was crino or prima. There are four different ones here, and they are basically all variations of each other in the Greek. And so what we're seeing is that every time it says condemned, it could also mean damned, or a verdict, or a guilt verdict, or a decree. So with that in mind, let's look at our text, which is Romans chapter 8. And it is, oh, I didn't send you bookmark colors, did I? It's yellow. <laughs> Not that that will do that much good. Okay. <laughs> After the fact. Uh, okay. There is therefore now no condemnation. Hallelujah. You have no condemnation if you're washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. I have no condemnation because I'm washed in the blood of the Lamb. And that condemnation means damnation. There is therefore now no damnation for those Hallelujah. to them that are in Christ Jesus. Now look, it qualifies it. It's, he's not going to let people get by with saying, yeah, I named his name back in 1942 and I haven't talked to him since. That won't fly. <laughs> what does Dr. Phil say? That dog won't hunt. <laughs> I like that. I like any Southern expression. Jesus, okay, which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. The law of sin and death is that law of damnation, that law of condemnation, that law that says you're not going to make it. You do not measure up. Of course we don't measure up. That should be uh, affirmed in our thinking from day one, from hour one. That should already be settled that we do not measure up. That's what the Old Testament came to do, is to convince us we cannot measure up no matter what we do or how we do it. And that's why Jesus came to bring us Amen. salvation in Him. All through the Word, it tells us over and again, in Him we live and move and have our being. In Him, in Him, in Him, we have victory over the powers of the enemy. If we ever go to the door when the devil knocks in the power of our own strength. Know this, you will come out beaten and bedraggled. It is only as you go and send Jesus, send Jesus to the door whenever the devil knocks. When you've answered that door, you say, I am covered in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Amen. I go in the power of the Lord God. Amen. It is Christ in the hope of glory. Quote the word, because that's your most important weapon. The weapons of our warfare are not right. carnal, and the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. That's what we fight the devil with. With a surrendered heart, the blood of the Lamb, the Word of our testimony, and we love not our lives. We will not put ourselves first. 
we will not put our comfort ahead of uh, the ministry, the Lord, His kingdom. We will Amen. say, I'll take Come a on. second seat Amen. to the Lord God. Okay, so here we're back to our passage. There is therefore no damnation, I'm going to plug that in for condemnation, to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. We get to make a choice. The flesh is the lower level. God is not in it. He never is. The reason Jesus came to save us was to save us from our lower carnal nature. And that's the flesh. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Whenever Smith Wigglesworth touched his hand to the germs of the demonic plague, he would right. claim this verse right here. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death and put his hand under that microscope and they watched those germs die. The power of the spirit is greater than the power of the flesh. God is greater and he has given us some divine tools and we just barely scratched the surface, but we're coming into it. We're going to go in and take the land. We need to get this in our head that we are victors. We are overcomers. Amen. We are not condemned. We are not damned. We are not in the place of the world. When we read this, so many times preachers say, well, there is therefore no condemnation. That means regret, remorse, guilt, feeling bad about your past. That's not really what he's talking about here. Amen. He's saying in Christ Jesus, there is no damnation. You're free from that if you're walking in the spirit of life, which is the spirit of Christ. If you're in that, then there's victory. Listen to what it says next. For what the law could not do, that's the Old Testament law, but it's also the law of sin and death, the law of condemnation, in that it was weak through the flesh. If I'm just not lying because it's the wrong thing to do, and I'm biting my tongue to keep from lying, then that's no victory. But when Jesus is coming into me, he brings the spirit of truth, and it takes the lying out. Right. I don't have a yearning to lie anymore. Ye who right. love the Lord hate evil. Psalm 97, 10. Bob got free from uh, drugs and uh, alcohol and cigarettes on that verse. As soon as he allowed the Lord God to work the hate in him for sin, it no longer had him, had him as, right. his, ma as his master. He was, it was no longer his master. That's what I'm trying to say. And uh, we learned that as he loved the Lord and invited the Lord to come in, all of these different things were annihilated, and he was no longer a servant to sin. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son... Now, it, the scripture says, in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, a little phrase in there. Let's just read it without the phrase and see how this word goes. God sending his own son for sin, damned sin in the flesh. Sin is damned. Sin is condemned. Sin doesn't have any right or authority in the spirit-filled Christian because Jesus lives there. Amen. Amen. Is it automatic? Not necessarily. We have to go in and ye who love the Lord hate evil. We have to actually practice it. We have to apply the scriptures and say, I'm standing on the word. Right. I believe the word. I believe that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus made me free from the law of sin and death. Yeah. The law of condemnation. That the righteousness, verse 4, of the law might be fulfilled in us. How's that? Are we under bondage? We're not under bondage, but everything in the law that is good and right and true, it came with glory. That is a good thing. We're in agreement that lying is wrong. We're in agreement that cheating is wrong. Stealing is wrong. We're in agreement that the law is good. But we didn't have the power to fulfill it until Christ came into us. And you say, well, I know somebody who uh, didn't lie and they didn't cling to Christ. I know somebody who didn't steal, but they didn't cling to Christ. By the, po the power of the flesh is no victory over flesh. That's what the Pharisees had. They had a perfect record. 
Remember the story in Luke 18 of the Pharisee who comes to the temple to pray right. and he prays with himself and he says, I thank thee God that I'm not as other men like this defiled publican over here, I, that I'm not an adulterer, I pay tithes of everything I've got. He had quite a laundry list of his good things and yet Jesus said, no good. And the one whose prayer was heard was the humble prayer that said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. That's where the life is. That's where the power is because it recognizes that we have no good in ourselves. Even when we do good, we cannot create in us a clean heart. We cannot create in ourselves a right spirit. Only God can do it. He wants us not only to do the right thing, but to have the right motive. And He will prevail in our lives. Amen. For they that are first fight, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. That's where we do not want to go. But they that are in the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded, that's the flesh, is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God. What is that? What is that law of God? It's the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. The carnal mind is not surrendered. The carnal mind is not saying, Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter, and I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will, while I am waiting, yielded and still. The carnal mind is exactly directly opposed to that. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. It has nothing in, in it that is holy. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. It is a completely different force. Yeah. It is the law of condemnation, that the, car the law of damnation that the carnal mind serves. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. We cannot white knuckle it. We cannot be good enough. We cannot resolve ourselves strongly enough to do right. We need to absolutely abandon those thought processes and say only Christ in me can ever manifest the good, the law of the life of the Spirit. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now if any man had not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. I hope you have this memorized. Because people often will start out on the right <coughs> path, or at least they uh, will make an attempt to, but then not go very far. Jesus in his parable told us of four kinds of different seed, that are four kinds of soil that the seed was planted in. The seed was the word of God. The seed is always good. But what it, how it reproduces depends upon our hearts. And the soil is a picture of our hearts. There was stony soil, rocky soil, shallow soil, and those would not grow anything. But the soil that was good soil only was 25%. 25% of the seed sown landed on good ground that produced 30, 60, and 100 fold. Fruit is what he's looking for. And we want our lives to be filled with fruit of this very spirit Amen. that he's talking about for um, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. The body is dead because of sin. What does it tell us to do? Render yourselves dead in your trespasses and sins. Well, count it. Count it as though uh, th that person is no longer alive. And if you truly count the uh, person that you were when you were in the world, as dead, crucified with Christ in the trespasses and sins, then it won't have any power to condemn you with regret and remorse and shame. This last week I sent out a request to some people because I was remembering thoughts from before uh, I was walking in the truth that I'm walking in right now in Christ Jesus. And I was remembering things thinking, what, what was I thinking there? Or, or I was remembering an embarrassing situation, you know, falling down on your face in front of somebody. That's a sort of shame. If he has redeemed us from regret and remorse and shame, because these are part of the damnation package, the devil doesn't do anything but beat people up. He beats people up with sometimes memories, sometimes different things. He beats people up. And when the devil comes to beat you up, 
if he has, if there's any truth to what he says, just repent from it. Say, Lord, if I never repented of this before, I'll use this memory as an opportunity to repent of the sin. That will, that's good and fine. But then once it's repented of, it's in God's seat of forgetfulness. And if you keep coming back, which we often do because the devil brings these damning thoughts. He brings these condemnation thoughts saying, look what you did. Look what you said. It's like, that's not me. I'm not that person anymore. Don't you dare accuse me of something that's under the blood of Jesus Christ. Right. Don't you dare pretend that the blood of Jesus Christ is somehow insufficient for my sins. That's a lie from the pit of hell. No sin is insufficient for the cleansing power in the blood of Amen. the Lamb. We don't hear enough preaching about the blood anymore, but we should have because the blood will never lose right. its power. It's what causes us right. to be righteous. Right. It's what causes us to be purged and purified and whole. And this day, as I minister this word, there is therefore now no damnation for those Amen. that walk. Hallelujah. Not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Amen. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made you free from the law of sin and death. And look at verse 3. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God, God did it. He, he did it for us. It's like a little kid who can't walk and his parent walks for right. him. That's what he did. It, we couldn't do it, and so God did it for us. Amen. For sin, condemned sin. God damned sin in the flesh. Oh, that sounded like a dirty word. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to sound, have it sound like that. God condemned sin in the flesh. He damned it. He condemned it in the flesh. That's the place where it breathes. Amen. That's the place where it it gets its strength is in the flesh. If the flesh is crucified with Christ, then it doesn't have any place to breathe right. anymore. It doesn't have any place to flourish anymore. And we're free. We're as free as a bird. Let us fly. Let us fly in the high places because whom the Son has set free we is free indeed. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. That's because Christ will kill it. I heard a preacher the other day on YouTube, and I'm pretty sure he's not going to be very popular, but he was good. He said, Jesus came to kill you, to save you. That grace means he will kill the flesh, and he will. Right. He will. Amen. Every trial Amen. that we go through, it's another opportunity for the death <coughs> of the flesh to manifest, Amen. and more of Christ to manifest, and that's what we want. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, that's our Jesus, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. The Holy Ghost will make us alive. Amen. The Holy Ghost will set our feet to dancing. Come on. The Holy Ghost will cause us to overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony as we love not our lives unto the death. There's victory. There is Hallelujah. victory in the power of the Amen. Lord. There's victory to overcome the, the lower nature, the flesh, the devil. All of these things are under our feet right. as we walk in the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Amen and amen. 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 Okay, Bob, I kept it at 23 minutes today. We're doing good. See you next week. Nope. It's okay. Let's, well, I want to bless y'all. Stand up if you will. Father, we come to your throne in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you that you have taken away the condemnation. We thank you, Lord, that...